Welcome to another week with me, Susie Barolo, Certified Life and Wellness Coach. I am here on this journey to help you live a life that you love. I am qualified to lead you on this journey because I have come from a life that I did not love much. In fact, I came from very dark and desperate days thinking you know all my worst fears had come true and now I am living a life that I truly feel is in alignment with my values and I've never loved my life more. In fact, I never even knew that this level of adoration for my life was possible. And so that is what I work with people everywhere on one-on-one um, -on -one, and then also clients just through watching this. Your life will improve if you take some of the actions that we do. We look at the wellness, the five pillars of wellness and also how we're managing our mind using the thought model. So those two tools together, boom, you're in. Today, we're gonna look at how many of us answer the question, how are you? If you're like 98.96321% of us, you say one of two things. You either say, I'm fine, and someone asks you how you are, or you say, I'm busy. Um, saying I'm fine, I'm not going to address much more in this blog or this blogcast other than to say that it's just stop. Uh, fine is an acronym that represents feelings inside needing expression. And if someone is asking you how you are, give them the honor and yourself the honor of really answering. You can say great or outstanding, amazing or miserable, mellow, you know, whatever, but give them, we have so many other, other adjectives to choose from. Choosing one that's just, you know, wrote like, yeah, I'm fine, great, um, is, is just disconnected and we are not, uh, we're not doing ourselves or those around us any favor. If you answer the busy answer, that is what this post is all, all about because I have a special ability to talk to this because for years and years and years, probably 40, I always forget how old I am now, but um, probably 44 years, I ran around telling everybody and telling myself how very busy I was. I would say I'm busy and I would repeat it in my head, oh, I'm so busy, I don't have time for that, Ugh, like in, in all different flavors of word I'm busy and about two years ago I rid my vocabulary of the word busy. I just decided I was no longer going to say it and ever since my life has thrived. What I've discovered in eliminating busy from my language was that using the word busy was holding me back in two ways. First, it kept me on the path of looking for external approval instead of internally, like my own approval. I was looking for other people's approvals. When I say I'm so busy or when I said I'm so busy, I felt validated, justified even, as if in being busy, it showed that I had made the right choices in my life. Remove the fact that I was rushing around doing a whole bunch of stuff that I didn't wanna do or wasn't particularly good at, <laughs> but if I was busy in my life, then my life, I obviously was on the right path, right? I mean, come on. Um, <laughs> yes. Second, the other way it held me back was it allowed me to hide from myself and my desires. If I was busy, I didn't have time to look too deeply at the life I was living and how I was living it. If my days were so full from the moment I started to the moment I lay my head down to fall asleep, I didn't have time to think of how I was feeling in those busy days. I didn't have time to think about my failing marriage. I didn't have time to look at the stress I was under and how that stress was creating physical ailments in my body. I didn't have time I just, my days were full, I ignored my needs. I didn't have time to see how me being so busy and rushing, rushing, rushing made me crankier and more reactive with my kids. I could go on and on. The truth of the matter was that I was busy. My days were full, but they were full because of my own decisions. I am not and was not a victim of my life but boy, did I let myself think I was. Boy, did I sort of word it like, oh, I'm so busy, I have so much to do, as if someone else signed me up for those committees or someone else told me I should volunteer there or someone else told me I should bring my kids to these different play dates or sports. No, Susie, it's all you. And I have been in the drudges of that and now live a life that's much more intentional and thus much calmer. Do I still have days when I catch myself saying, I'm so busy, I'm so busy? Yes, I do. A thought comes up. It was a habitual thought of mine for over 40 years. I drove a deep groove into my brain. 
Um, however, I have a framework that I've set up that catches me so I do not fall down in that spiral down into that busyness anymore and I want to help you with that. And one way to do that is to audit your life following these three steps. First, I would like you to start a vocabulary audit, okay? Starting today, remove the word busy from your vocabulary. Instead of saying I'm so busy because I understand that you feel like, you know, but instead of saying I'm so busy to yourself and others, say I have all the time to get done what I need to get done. That was huge for me. I would repeat that over and over. I would say to myself and to others, and my kids were like, okay, mom. <laughs> but I, I was like, I have all the time to get done what I need to get done. Um, this is the first step and it is the most crucial. I want you to pay attention to what you're telling yourself and others. Um, but mostly to yourself, that voice in your head, if you're routinely telling yourself that um, <clears throat> you're so busy and you're too busy, your brain looks for evidence actually to prove that that's right. So when you say, I'm so busy, I'm so busy, it looks for things to fill up your days. It comes up with a long list of ways that you are too busy and you will find ample excuses to fill your days and put your dreams on hold. Once you shift what you're telling yourself, your brain will look to ev for evidence to support that. That's the beauty of it. When I tell myself that I have all the time to get done what needs to get done, it's like a little like electric prick to my brain that's like, yoo-hoo, you have all the time to get done what needs to get done. Is what you're doing right now what needs to get done? Like, is that time on Facebook what needs to be done? Is that time responding to that email that you didn't even know existed 10 minutes ago what needs to get done? No. So when I tell my brain that I have all the time that that I, I have all the time to do the things that need to get done. My brain looks for evidence to support that. It's quite ma magical. Saying I'm so busy keeps me from living my life and I want you to see in this step how saying I'm so busy is holding you back too, okay? While you're at it, for bonus stars on this step, you could stop saying I have to and start saying I choose to. That's quite empowering. But, uh, watch how your mood shifts. Second part of this audit is a time audit. Get out a pen and paper and write down everything you do in your day for three days. Start with when you wake up in the morning and finish when you close your eyes. How are you spending your days? How you spend your days is how you spend your life, okay? I used to tell myself I didn't have time to read. The truth was that I was choosing to spend my time doing other things. I had time to read. I was choosing to spend it elsewhere. In telling myself I didn't have time or that I was too busy, I was lying to myself. Once we do our vocabulary audit and remove the word busy, writing down how we're spending our days is illuminating as we learn why we're spending the, how we're spending the day, why we're spending it the way we're spending it, how are we spending it. This is the step, I'm just warning you, that most people want to skip, okay? Please don't. It's the most liberating of them all. And by liberating, I truly mean you will feel freer when you're done. It's a little uncomfortable doing it, writing it down because you're bringing awareness to the different ways that you're wasting time or different ways that maybe you're not being as effective, but it is a huge healer in the end of our life and of our time management and where we're putting our energy. Um, why do people resist this step? I can tell you why I did, <laughs> okay? Two pretty good reasons, an excuse and fear. My excuse was that it would take too much time. My excuse was that it would take too much time to see how I was spending my time, that I couldn't just jot down like checking out Facebook on a piece of paper. Hmm. Yeah, okay, serious, laugh out loud. Once I could laugh at myself over that one, I threw that excuse out the window and I discovered that I actually was a bit afraid. I was afraid to look too closely at what I was doing or how I was spending my days. Since I viewed my busyness as a sign that I mattered and that I had made the correct decisions, I was afraid to learn otherwise. Maybe you too have a fear that you'll discover what you're doing with your days. You think you're so busy, but then you're like, oh, okay, well, if I take out those extraneous errands that I really don't need to do, or what, like, how am, where do the hours go? How much time are you spending on your phone? How much time are you spending procrastinating? Some of us procrastinate doing household chores or errands because it feels like, oh, this is real, but no. What needs to get done and how much time are you spending procrastinating? How much time are you spending doing useless tasks that don't move you towards your desired feeling state of calm? Like I used to go to Target more times than 
anyone, I, and I don't put judgment there, but I used to go a lot and you know, I would go, oh, I need hand soap. Okay, let's, let's drop everything and go because geez, you know, I can, I can use dishwasher, so I do now. Um, for change to occur, we must change things. One way to change is to change how we're spending our days. In order to do that, we have to face our fear of seeing what we're doing and then do it anyway, warriors. You can. So please get out a piece of paper. You can start right now and write down what you're doing. You can, if it's, you can do half hour chunks if you want, but get started. Okay. Um, how you spend your days is how you spend your lives. Track your time to see where your time is available. Be that compassionate observer of your life instead of the critical judge. Instead of beating yourself up for all the errands you run in a week, look at why you're choosing to do that and what you might do differently next week. View tracking your time as a tool to see where you have time available instead of a place where you can be critical with, to yourself. Okay? Third piece of our audit is the joy audit. And this is wonderful. Once we've tracked our time, we can start infusing joy into our lives. As adults, we take life so seriously, people. We tell ourselves that we're supposed to be busy and that we're supposed to live this heavy feeling over scheduled life as if there's nothing fun about being an adult. We even, I've heard it and I've said it, we even tell kids and those younger than us, enjoy this while it lasts. Actually, I'm not sure I've said that because it's always bugged me. <laughs> okay, but we do tell kids, we're like, enjoy this while we, it lasts, or these were your glory days, or oh wow, you better enjoy that because, mm, God, when you're an adult, mm, really, really? Okay, um, we do not have to portray adulthood as synonymous with misery. <laughs> I did live many of my years like this, living a life that felt heavier, weighed down by responsibilities that I thought I had. Hey, here's a wake up call, okay? You're not supposed to be miserable in life. That is not part of being an adult. You do not have to just feel weighed down by these responsibilities. In fact, I argue the exact opposite. That which brings you joy is why you're here on this earth. I feel so passionately about this. When I started to do what I was just this, what I'm doing now, I, whole avenues of my life opened up. I am a completely different woman, mother, everything. Everything gets better. That what brings you joy is why you are here, people. Um, I enjoy the things I enjoy because that's what I'm here to do. That is what brings you, that's what you're here to do. Look at the, your joy in your life and view it as a laser as to what your purpose is in life. So many people are like, I don't know what my purpose is. I'm like, okay, so what do you like to do? Let's go there, all right? Many of us start from a really deprived state where we're like, I don't know what I like to do. That's fine. I've done other posts on that and you can contact me and I'll help you with that. The easiest way to get around that is make a list of what you don't like to do. Usually we have a good idea of what we don't like to do, but you gotta start somewhere. Um, I'm not here on earth to do something I don't enjoy, nor are you, all right? As, yeah, you just, as a certified coach, I need to pause and tell you all that self-care and self-actualization is quite different than self-sabotage. So I'm not saying that, okay, you might not like doing the laundry, so you don't need to do that. There are certain tasks that are part of our life and we can work changing our mindset over that. Etc. Our brain wants to do what it's always done. It doesn't like change, so it might try to convince you like, oh yeah, Susie's saying you don't need to do that, so no. Um, get clear on what actually brings you joy is what you can do. What brings you joy versus what brings you that quick hit of dopamine and doesn't create longer lasting joy. An example is you having a glass of wine after another shitty day at work, that's the hit of dopamine, versus you stopping not having the wine and looking at why your day was shitty in the first place. What can you do to change it? So that's the difference there. Um, I encourage you to pause at the end of your days this week when you're writing out that, I don't know, before your next blog, this would be great, and ask yourself these three questions. What did I do today that I enjoyed? Okay, what did you do today that you enjoyed? This is your one, this one day, whatever the date is, this is that one day of yours on earth. You don't, you don't do this day over. What did you do today that you enjoyed? Okay, what did you do today that you didn't really enjoy? That's question number two. What didn't? you really enjoy. 
And then question number three is how can you get more of number one and less of number two moving forward, specifically tomorrow? How can you do more of one and less of two? How can you bring more joy into your life and leave less of the non-joy behind? All right, that's it. Three pieces of your, of your audit. How did it go? How clean is your vocabulary? How do you manage your time? How much joy do you have in your days? <laughs> These are three pieces of choosing a life you love choosing to live a life you love. You and only you are in charge of how you fill your days and how you feel in your days. When I realize that no one else is to blame for my current situation and no one is coming to save me, I felt fear at first. I think I felt that like, oh yeah, of course, someone's, but I felt a lot of fear. But slowly with support, I began to take that knowledge and feel lighter, freer, and ultimately, lighter and freer and empowered. Just absolutely wonderful. If it is meant to be, it is up to me. Wow, okay, so if it's meant to be, it's up to me, I can do it. My life is the only one I have and I'm the only one who chooses how to live this life. I have been down that dark hole, I really have, thinking my days were out of control and at the time all my fears had come true. So I understand how you're feeling if you're in that dark hole now, please reach out to me. Not only can I help you, but that's what I'm here to do, all right? I have been given my life experiences so as to help others. I help others by sharing my story and then also connecting with you and helping you move through your life. Take this life audit and get back to me. Life happens for us, not to us. Choose today to perform an audit on your day. Let me know what you find and go get them, warriors. All right, if you're listening to this, could you just follow me on YouTube or wherever you're listening, SoundCloud, um, however you got me, sign up for my weekly newsletter. The way I help people is getting my message out to more people. So if you liked this, share it with a friend and let me know. Ah, I'd be so excited. Um, that would be a joy audit for me or take a snap, take a shot. I don't do Snapchat. Take a shot and put on your IG story and tag me. Yay! Okay, however, let's get the message out there, guys. Life is meant to be lived and loved, and together we can do this. Bye, warriors.